Okay, let's get started. I, I am Hyungjun and I'm gonna talk about uh, propensity score rating using Stata. So in making this file, I have heavily relied on this book, Propensity Score Analysis, written by Guo and Fraser. So I highly encourage this book for those interested in propensity score analysis in general. We know that propensity score analysis, we know what propensity score analysis is, right? Thanks to Erin's lecture. There are three broad types of PSA, the propensity score matching, propensity score rating, and uh, subclassification. They have their own strengths and drawbacks. The propensity score rating, or the PSW, has advantage in that it allows to use most types of multivariate analysis, including this linear regression, multilevel modeling, and even structural equation modeling. Additionally, it allows to use most observations, unlike matching. As a running example, I will use my current project that I am working with Jane, which, which is the relationship between home ownership and social capital. Home ownership is not randomly distributed. Rather, it is systematically affected by antecedent conditions such as age, gender, and marital status, to name a few. This makes the causal inference using traditional analytic methods like ORS vulnerable and calls for the, the adjustment for selection bias. Here, home ownership is binary in which owners are one and non-owners are zero. These are a set of covariates I will use based on uh, previous literature. We have five steps to do PSW. The first step is checking data balance with t-test or bivariate linear regression. This example is a bivariate linear regression, right? So if you your covariate is continuous, you will use the ORS. And if your covariate is binary, you will use log logistic regression or you can use probit regression, but uh, yeah, it's, it's your choice. And here, a significant coefficient, beta, means that there is a significant difference between the treated and the controlled. So to be balanced, beta should be insignificant. If all covariates are already balanced, the researcher may move on to main analysis. Uh, even though it is a very rare case in social sciences. Otherwise, the significant coefficient means that there is a selection bias and the researcher needs to address it. These results are examples of age and female among the set of covariates. Uh, I cannot show the all results of covariates Covariate, so I just cho I just chose these two things. As you can see, age and female are in the place of outcome, like this outcome, uh, and the ownership is in the place of explanatory variables, like this. If you see the significance of the coefficient, uh, age is significant, as you can see, uh, the p-value is near zero, and while y female is not significant. It means that there is a systematic difference of ownership by age, and we need to address this bias. The second step is obtaining a propensity score. A propensity score is the same with the predicted probability, right? 
so you just run a binary logistic regression like this, which is like this. So this procedure is crucial because propensity score analysis can address observed endogeneity only, which means that unobserved heterogeneity, unobserved endogeneity is not uh, addressed using this procedure. So the researcher should be careful about deciding which covariate to be included. So I ran a logistic regression like this. Logit, this is the outcome, and this is the covariate. These are covariates. And I obtained uh, the predicted probability using predict command here. The next step is calculating weight. One caveat is that the propensity score and propensity score weight are different. So weights are 1 over p. Here p is uh, obtained the propensity score for the treated and 1 over 1 minus p for the control. I calculated weight following the formula. So for hormones, as you can see, I asked data to calculate the 1 over uh, propensity score for homeowners and 1 over 1 minus propensity score if the non-owners, if the, the respondent is non-owners. And this is the, this is the obtained uh, propensity score weight. And this is a propensity score itself. The fourth step is to check data balance once again. But this time, uh, you need to apply propensity score weight uh, in models. So we need to use a p-weight, like, like here. And as you can see now, there is a no significant difference. Uh, no significant difference in age between owners and non-owners after applying this propensity school rate. So this is a table in my paper to report data balance before and after the rate adjustment. Note that what you are seeing are p-values, like p-values instead of coefficients. So before the adjustment, there are many variables co-varying with home ownership, such as education, and this marital status, whether the respondents living in urban areas or rural areas, whether he or she is working at government-related organizations. However, after the adjustment, the all variables come to be balanced, except this living with extended family, right? So what this table wants to convey is that the now that selection bias is addressed with the propensity score weight, we can proceed to the substantial analysis without the necessary necessity to control these covariates. As a final step, we need to perform substantial analysis applying the obtained weight. So I ran a simple OLS uh, applying this weight. This is a outcome, and this is the uh, explanatory variable, which is a treatment on ownership. And it's very simple, right? And as a result, the coefficient of home ownership uh, turns out to be positive, positive and significant.
which suggests that homeowners have greater social capital than non-owners. Actually, you can do this analysis using t effects commands if you have stata version 13 or higher. So this is a command for t effect IPW, which stands for inverse probability weighting. So we can see that the resulting coefficients are the, uh, exactly the same with the previous analysis, like 0 0.253, you can see 0 0.253 here, right? And this is the, the how to uh, execute the program. T effect IPW, uh, this is an outcome of interest, and these are, this is a treatment. This is a treatment, and these are all covariate. The one advantage of T-Effect command is that it provides tools to assess whether covariates are balanced or not, which is a formal test. So after executing T-Effect command, you can use this T balance over identification command. And here the null, null hypothesis is the covariates are balanced. And it performs a chi-squared test like this. So here we want, uh, we don't want to reset the null hypothesis, right? So the P value should be greater than 0 0.05. Here, fortunately, uh, the p-value is over 0 0.05, and we can conclude that covariates are balanced. You can ask to the table for covariate balance summary using te balance summarize command. So if the covariate is balanced, the mean difference between the treated and the controlled will be zero will be zero, and the variance of the difference will be one, right? Which is the standard normal distribution. So in the, in the table, values in the left-hand side uh, are before the adjustment, and values in the right-hand side are after the adjustment. So many differences of covariates became closer to zero, and their variance became closer to 1. For, for example, this variable, it has a mean difference of 0.2 before the adjustment, but it becomes a, a 0.01. And its variance, uh, variance of difference became closer to 1. Yeah. So they say they, these are references. So I hope this presentation helps you understand the propensity score rating. So if you have any questions, please email me. Thank you very much.